Are we on? We are on. Can you can hear me well. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> it's loud and clear. Wonderful. <laughs> good, good. Absolutely. How's everyone feeling? Thank you for joining us today. Welcome back to our Instagram Live. Yeah. Communities of uh, Stories of Community and Social Change. My name is Amina. This is a space where we invite community leaders and artists to discuss their defining moments that shape their efforts in building peace, unity, community, safety in, in Oakland, in their community. This podcast is part of a Love Over Fear Oakland campaign organized by our family at Interfaith Movement for yeah. Human Integrity. Defending the human humanity of immigrants, defending the rights of the incarcerated, Interfaith Movement for Human Integrity is at the intersection of faith, social movement, and spirituality infusing the work with love. This campaign is a response to the challenges faced by communities of color in Oakland. We acknowledge the root causes that disrupt safety and community collaboration. So through this podcast, through photo exhibition, art events, community concerts, we're here to create dialogue, create connection between the Black, the AAPI, the Chicano community. So let's get right into it. When we speak about love and peace, let's speak about good jobs. Let's speak about affordable housing, um, sanctuary for immigrants, communities, not tearing up families and, you know, fighting against the threat of deportation and imprisonment. My next guest, Jeremy, are you there? I hope you're here with us. Okay, let me, okay, let me get him back in here. Let's see, maybe his connection. Okay, you're okay, back. Me, I'm back. All okay. right, we're rolling. We're rolling. We're rolling. We're rolling. We're rolling. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, we're connection is good. I hear you loud and clear, but I was just okay. gonna say um, that you're gonna share your love language when it comes to mm. creating freedom, justice, and equality for all, because we're facing issues here, right? When we're speaking about love and peace, we're being about good jobs, affordable housing, sanctuary for immigrants, right? Yeah. Fighting against the threat of tearing up families and right. um, threat of deportation, imprisonment. You're on the front line when yeah. it comes to this. Uh, as a faith organizer for East Bay Alliance for a Suitable Economy, eBase, mm -hmm. an organization that um, that fights for economic that fights against economic injustice by creating strategic alliance amongst community, labor, and people of faith to build power and create change with low-income workers and communities of color. Yeah. You're a great community leader that works to preserve the faith of the people in areas of social justice. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Re Welcome. Reverend Jeremy McCants, thank you so much for being here. Yeah. We're flowing through the, the <laughs> technology. <laughs> To the best of our abilities, yeah. yes, indeed. Uh, this work. Yeah. Absolutely. How are you? How are you feeling? I am feeling good. A little tired, of course, um, just with so much going on. Um, Self-care is is uh, a necessity and uh, is a right. Um, you know, rest is is um, rest is resistance, right? Um, so we we have to be mindful of that. But I am doing well. Thank you, Amina. Mm -hmm. Uh, for the hospitality and the wonderful welcome to Interfaith Movement for Human Integrity, Reverend Deb Lee and Gayla uh, King, who I work in tandem with um, to bring life and light to these issues. Um, so it's good to have another platform to just kind of yeah, speak about my, my life, my story, but also uh, what brings me to the work. Um, so excited to be here. It's an honor to have you. And it's yeah. so interesting to talk about self-care because that's actually yeah. One of the things I would like to discuss mm -hmm. today, so important, you know, to the movement, to the work that we're doing. Yeah. You define yourself as a Southern gentleman as dedicated to liberation <laughs> of all of God's creation through the mm -hmm. love and light of God expressed through Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's beautiful, beautiful. So I just want us and everyone to get to know a little bit about your path. Can you? 
Tell us the defining moments on your spiritual path that allowed you, inspired you to do this work. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I am a Southern gent. I am a Georgia boy at heart, uh, born and raised uh, in the little town of Sonoya, um, Sonoya, Georgia. It's about an hour south of Atlanta. Um, and I wanted to make a practice to start actually naming my parents because my parents have been a big part of who I am and who I've become. Uh, so I'm, a, I'm the son of Linda and Jimmy McCants. Um, and my father actually, he passed away in 2019. Um, so living and um, expanding his legacy um, and, and the great father that he was to me and the great husband that he was uh, to my mom um, has been some of the uh, kind of the avenues. Uh, they, they, they raised me in the church. Uh, so I'm a Baptist boy. Um, as the saying goes, I'm Baptist born, Baptist bred, and when I die, I'll be Baptist dead. Amen. <laughs> um, so uh, just a, a, a funny colloquialism. But uh, yeah, so born and raised in the church, um, you know, times when I didn't want to do anything, my parents would make me uh, do it. And um, and for most uh, Black folks who are now in the public sphere, uh, we normally say that our first public speaking, um, uh, first public or at least invitation to public speaking was in the Black church right uh so the black church has and continues to be an incubator uh for black prophetic uh witness for um you know as dr king would say th that has been the institution that has saved the soul of america mm -hmm. right it has been the black church or black movements that were birthed out of the church black institutions hbcus which i am a product of uh 2013 graduate of morehouse college um so all of those things um, from magic from childhood to education um, and to uh, just adult adulthood when life is just life in um, and trying to figure out why why are these things happening um, I've always just known I, I, I love preaching I love the art of preaching um, but I, I knew that there was always something more than just coming to church Sunday Sunday in, Sunday out, Bible studies, like all of that definitely has fortified me. Um, but I always knew that there was something to um, shifting the actual uh, lives of people, right, outside of the spiritual component. Um, and so I've, I've always just had an inkling for social justice um, and for uh, civic engagement in some ways. Um, but all of that has you have led us into just the interconnectedness of oppression uh, when it comes to um, sexism, ageism, racism, <laughs> capitalism, all of the isms, right? Yes. And um, like, how do we, you know, address the root causes and not the symptoms, right? Um, because I think we get caught up in addressing the symptoms that we we forget about. And, and it's enough, uh, just addressing the symptoms, that is tiring work, right? That is That is work too. But I do believe that some of us have been called to address the issues of why um, those symptoms are present in the first place. Um, so that's that's a little spill about who I am and who I'm becoming. Thank you, thank you for that. I yeah. think I think my one of my defining moments. I'm a Chinese Muslim, and what really kind of taught me about faith is seeing my grandparents mm. work really hard jobs like I grew up in Chinatown in San Francisco yeah. and seeing the the sewing machine whenever I see the sewing machine I see my grandmother yeah. working long hours with really there's really no money you know but making these garments that are feeding these big companies and these big corporations right. and I remember seeing her living conditions my grandmother my grandfather who wore long hours washing dishes mm -hmm. in restaurants you know and i'm like and then also turning back and why isn't why aren't they living in the conditions right. i'm seeing on tv you know right. but their hard work and their pers perseverance and their resiliency taught me so much about faith and i think that's what's what i really appreciate about ebase's work that you guys mm -hmm. build coalition uh, amongst the labor community with faith. Um, right. And so I want us to get to know more about the core principles of eBase. Can okay. you share a little bit about the work, um, the core principles of it, and how it came yeah. together? Yeah. Um, so eBase, uh, East Bay Alliance for Sustainable Economy, um, has been around for about 25 plus years. 
um, again, committed to economic justice. Um, so in our present iteration, we have at the ham, the amazing Kate O'Hara, um, who is a fierce, fierce leader who has led us um, ably over, you know, uh, through the pandemic. And I, I joined after, after the pandemic, but was uh, connected to our interfaith work, um, which is called FAME, Faith Alliance for a Moral Economy. So that lives inside of eBase. And again, like you said, that connection of understanding labor, faith, um, and our approach is around the, um, when, it, when it comes to uh, workers' rights, uh, which is the work that we primarily focus here in Alameda County, uh, we, we take the holistic worker approach, right? So it's caring for mind, body, and spirit. Um, and then in uh, Contra Costa County, uh, we do a lot of our housing justice work, which has been um, centered around tenant organizing, right? So actually organizing tenants, um, working class families um, and those who are directly impacted by ordinances and things that are coming from City Hall when it comes to rent stabilization and things of that sort. Um, and so, yeah, those are kind of the two main bugs and we're kind of, we also have um, a C4 and East Bay Action um, that is led by our Deputy Director, Sabir Lockett, um, who's another fierce leader that we have. And um, just expanding that work of co-governance, of understanding and equipping community uh, to be trained in civic engagement tools and tactics, uh, to be able to come to city city council meetings and advocate for themselves, right? Um, you know, we we always ask where the people are, and you know, some people understand their lane and understand like politics, like that's not where I want to be. But then there are some folks who do want to engage, but they just don't have the tools. So I'm grateful that eBase does have that foresight of like, how do we actually train? and not, not just mobilize people, but actually train them to where they effectively, effectively and efficiently understand what's going on and how they're being impacted. And that this, you know, change takes time, right? And understanding the long game of it, right? That, okay, we may not have gotten this win now, but this, make, this moves the needle closer to where we want. And even for me, um, you know, I try to live in a way of what am I creating that I may not live to see? Right. I think that was really the faith of our ancestors, same as you, right, that they were able to envision a world that they knew that they may not live to to uh, to enjoy and to inhabit. So I think we do have to move with that same intention and that same imagination. Um, and, I, and I believe that that is what eBase uh, moves with as well. And so um, and one one last thing with eBase is that we just um, completed our long term agenda. Um, so that's been a new kind of uh, um, strategy um, across some, some, you know, economic justice or just nonprofit um, organizations in general. So the long term agenda has kind of shaped our next 10 years of work, which is a very long arc. Right. Um, and so I just want to name. So uh, we, we spent um, a very long process. <laughs> of, of, of defining that, but our values, we wanted to be intentional about our values. And uh, so our five values are tenacity. We understand that our work takes a level of tenacity, love and compassion, intentionality, shared responsibility, and the, the cornerstone is hope. Um, and so all of that, tenacity, love and compassion, intentionality, shared responsibility, hope, is are the, are the core principles that guide all of the work that we do at eBase. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Wonderful. What are some of the ways, or actually, how can we support these mm -hmm. goals and this plan of yours? What could the city um, invest in that will help with this plan? Yeah. Um, I mean, so many things, right? I, I think, um, you know, primarily in Oakland now, we have the mid year budget cycle coming up. And uh, we are part of the coalition uh, known as the Oakland People's Budget Coalition. And so that is, um, yeah, a, a number of highly respected, highly sought out, um, highly engaged and uh, impactful organizations here in, in um, the East Bay. And so um, uh, along with the Oakland People's Budget, the uh, FAME, our Interfaith Contingency, we also have the Moral Budget Platform, which was, we did in partnership with Interfaith Movement for Human Integrity. Um, so, um, you know, it, it's as simple as creating space as far as the, what the city can do to help and just the community is just creating space for us to listen, um, to listen 
listen to one another, to learn from one another, to value each other's input, um, and to know that all of our actions and decisions do have a ripple effect, right? Whether it's behind closed doors, whether it's, you know, um, out in the front, like all of our actions have a ripple effect and we are all impacted. Um, and I think that's the shared responsibility of it. So, you know, I think it, it is it is as simple as just creating, you know, more spaces for community to have engagement um, and to have meetings at times where people can be engaged, um, right? Um, where people can actually, um, working class families, right? Um, be able to come uh, to city hall meetings and things of that of that sort. Um, and I think, yeah, just listening, um, responding in a way uh, that um, makes each other feel seen and heard, but also that we are doing, you know, taking these tangible steps um, to, to make life better in some ways. We understand that everything, again, won't happen overnight, um, that even in fighting for democracy, even around the recall language with our mayor and the DA, right, and it's all of these folks who are coming up against people who are in office, essentially blaming them for where we are, mm. when that same kind of energy wasn't given to those who got us to where we are, right? Um, so it's, it's dealing with some of the accountability issues um, of, of how this city is, is ran, has been ran, is being run, um, and, and the accountability of, on the community. That's right. Um, of, of like, yeah, we do hold our elected officials accountable, but let us also hold each other accountable. Let's, let's hold churches and faith communities accountable. Let's hold these nonprofits accountable. You know, it's, it's, it takes all of us. And so, um, I think at the end of the day, um, it, it does simply begin with listening, creating space for those, for that listening and then responding. Mm, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think when we speak about faith and we speak about love, we have to understand accountability. Right. And so I think establishing accountability is from these spaces that you speak of, like creating mm -hmm. that dialogue and that understanding. So you mentioned yeah. FAME, which is um, Faith Alliance for Moral Economy, which is a faith-rooted um, program, organizing mm -hmm. program under eBay. And so Correct. it has this moral budget that you partnered with Interfaith Movement for Human Integrity. It includes mm -hmm. the economic justice for Black Correct. Oakland in the moral budget. Can you yeah. share with us more information? What is that about yeah. and the importance of that? Absolutely. Um, so yeah, we call EJ for BO. We love acronyms. We turn everything into an acronym, <laughs> right? <laughs> but economic justice for Black Oakland was... Um, essentially birthed um, uh, some years ago when we had uh, the Bay Area Black Worker Center. And, um, and so out of uh, solidarity and uh, ensuring that that space was kept alive, um, it since has kind of uh, diminished, but we're trying to see how we can revitalize and resurrect that. Um, so it was birthed out of, yeah, essentially trying to keep that organization alive, but also the understanding that it takes faith. Um, and it takes an interfaith approach uh, to, again, even with the moral budget, bringing a moral lens uh, to these quote unquote secular kind of movements, right? And so even with uh, the, uh, the city budget, right, we come saying that this is not just a governmental document. This is a moral document. Mm -hmm. This is a moral mandate. This is us holding you true to your word, right? Um, and so that, and that's how we approach all of our kind of, um, you know, whether it's through coalitions, whether it's us solely, but all of the work that we do when we infuse faith into it, it's not even in the, the infusing of it, it's the, the revealing and the uncovering that this has been a religious and a faith matter from the beginning, right? And so you, you'll you hear, you know, prominent leaders that I listen to, and I want to lift up even my, my pastor, Pastor the Reverend Dr. Jacqueline A. Thompson at Allen Temple Baptist Church, who talks about, you know, that this, what we're seeing in our nation is a spiritual issue. Absolutely. It has to do with the heart. It has to do with everything that makes us human, but also that makes us divine, right? Um, and it's about who is shaping that narrative 
right? Um, and so, yeah, when we think about uh, economic justice for Black Oakland, it was rooted in the identity, definitely as a Black person and as a Black man, of how labor, um, uh, it, labor just, it, it means so much. Um, I think people really, really don't understand. We, we go to work every day, right? We go through the motions, um, but labor is such a sacred act. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it needs to be viewed as such. And and when, when you're seeing folks who are being manipulated and, you know, shout out to our Oakland team who are fighting for back weight, uh, you know, for wage theft and, and wages that are owed to hospital workers, to even undocumented workers, um, we understand that the Black American story, Black people in America, that has always been our story, that this world, that this country was built off of the labor of, of my ancestors, right? Uh, with no recompense, with no reconciliation, with no reparation, with no sign of even, no, with no, with even no apology, right? right? With no, no even acknowledgement of that, that they're still trying to take that out of history books, that critical race theory is still being shot down, right? So to not just live with no apology, no reparations, but to still live in reality that they're still trying to put that story under the rug, put our story under the rug. So economic justice for Black Oakland is that fighting for um, to ensure Black labor and Black workers here in the Bay Area specifically are um, have, a, have a space to, again, to, to listen, to, to, for them to be heard, um, but for them to also know that they have um, another entity that will be fighting for them and uh, a, a soft landing space if you know something happens with their jobs and things of that nature um so economic justice for black oakland has been a space of um sharing um but also understanding what is the role of faith in this work um and how do we continue to create spaces that are unapologetically black right, That's right. um so it, it gets it gets hard right it gets it gets real real silent real icky sticky when we want to say um, um, uh, things, when we want to be unapologetically black, and uh, I'm, I love stand-up comedy, and one of my uh, favorite comedians was uh, Paul Mooney, who is a Bay Area legend. Oh yeah, I love him, right? He was living in the Bay Area was, for a while. That was for a while, right? And um, so you know, he had the line. I can't remember what special was, but he said it was. It's funny how 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 things can be too black, but nothing can ever be too white. Yeah. He <laughs> brought gems on us to really make us Absolutely. think and look at our uh, our perception of reality. How yeah. can we support this program? How can one um, get in touch, yeah. contribute in, in any way? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, as of now, we meet every second Tuesday of the month at 10 a.m. Uh, so feel free to reach out to me. Um, my email is Jeremy, J-E-R-E-M-Y at workingeastbay.org. Jeremy at workingeastbay.org. So just yeah, shoot me an email. Um, yeah, we you know, it's, it is, um, and that's what I also love about fame. It is interfaith, but it's also for those who don't have an affinity to faith, you know, um, naming specific, you know, even atheists, um, Gnostics, those who, you know, um, don't really identify or connect with a prominent, you know, faith or faith community, but understand that, you know, faith is still something, right? They really can't define it or put their finger on it, but they know that there is something supernatural, extraordinary that happens, right? Um, and so, yeah, um, uh, we meet every second Tuesday at 10 a.m. And yeah, it's, it's really welcome to all that, that want to be engaged in economic justice and specifically economic justice for Black people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So everyone, yeah. please you know, I guess look deeper into the work, yeah. understand see how we can support, you know, Oakland has just have a, such a great history of unity on right. so many um, areas when it comes to social justice and, um, you know, Level of Fear Oakland campaign, you know, we're trying to build connections between the AAPI, the Black and Chicano community. Right. And, you know, this narrative that's that sometime goes on that divide our issues you know immigrants you you come over here and you take all our jobs Labor. Um, 
And so it kind of forces us to pit our like our issues against each other. And we're like fighting over these, yeah. you know, for scraps, really. Yeah, the crumbs. Um, and, and so, yes, how can we cultivate these connections? How can we um, create more unity between people of, of color? You know, I mean, that's our rich history. Yeah. of yeah. 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 And it, it's um, it's tough. Um, and, you know, and as an organizer and trying to create space to where all of us can come there together, safe space at that, um, you know, I think there, as you said, I think it is a ploy of capitalism and uh, a ploy of, you know, dare I say, just American patriotism. Um, that just pits us against each other, right? And as you said, fighting over crime, even with nonprofits, right? Like everybody's advocating, trying to apply for the same grants, trying to, right? And we're all doing the same work, trying to get to the same same destination. And so I think that's always been, you know, one of the things of like, um, everyone just has, has different opinions and different visions of how to get to liberation and how to get to, um, the beloved community, right, as Dr. King would say. Um, I think, and you know, this, this this has just been uh, ongoing conversations for generations, right? So it's like, even when I think I'm thinking of something new, it's like, no, that's that's been tried too, probably. Um, but yeah, I think labor is that the, one of those defining things around how we, because we just have to find common denominators, right? Um, like every movement, you know, that transcended race, gender, um, class, even that's what I'm kind of getting to is classism that really separates us. Um, because that transcends all of those things, right? Um, so yeah, when we're thinking about all of the things, all of the movements that, that have transcended, it has been that there has been a common denominator, right? This is the one thing that we agree on, whether it's women's voting rights, um, uh, better resources for black, for black students in schools, right? Um, so, you know, there's, there just has to be something that we all can agree on, which is still very broad and vast, right? Um, but in the Christian experience, this past Sunday uh, was what we call Pentecost Sunday. Um, and that is when some would call it um, the birthday of the, of the Christian church of when the uh, God sent sent the Holy Spirit down um, and it came in, they defined it as a mighty rushing wind and all all people in, in Galilee at the time, they came to see um, because they could hear their native tongue, mm -hmm. right? So it said that they had like uh, people from Cyrene, from the Dees, uh, Phrygia, I'm trying to think of all of it, Rome, like even the empire of Rome, folks from Rome, right? The people who, kill Jesus, right, come running because they can hear their language. And I think that goes back to the listening aspect, but um, that, that spirit of coming down as a fire and as a rushing wind that lifted up the veil, that, that revealed that even though we have been speaking different languages this whole time, mm -hmm. we've really been saying the same thing, right? Um, and I think it is that, again, listening, hearing, creating space, and I know that just seems so simple. Um, and then I think it's also, we just have to look for it. Um, yeah, we just have to look at moments and spaces and organizations that have been able to do this. Um, and we have to just name, you know, the enemy of envy, of jealousy, and you know, that that's a real thing, right? But say like, okay, this is what they are doing well, this is what we are doing well, how can we build a bridge um, uh, to, to, to make our work more synergized? And it's also keeping the people <laughs> at, at the center, keeping those who are directly impacted, um, which is black, brown, right? Indigenous women, right? It's, it's how do we keep amplifying and lifting up their voices um, so that their stories are told and that we, um, are actually, yeah, putting ourselves to where there, if there is a divestment of power, that we are equipped enough to handle it. Because I think that 
Yeah, I just dropped that on myself. Because, <laughs> you know, and that's some of the frustration I get with myself, even in this work, that we're working so hard and we're getting these wins. But it's like what we're trying to create, we haven't seen before. At least we feel like, or at least I speak for myself, right? And so it's, it's yeah, being privy and aware that the world that we are fighting for, we may not be equipped to really handle um mm. and that even though we are trying to dismantle systems that even in the the perfect utopia that even with christian the christian experience that god had that there was there is a system right that that even um uh that even when we get to this utopia and this this level of liberation that we are fighting for that there is still a system that 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 still has to be in place so that what we've just come from doesn't happen again Right. So, um, yeah, I, I know that there's a lot in there. So I'll pause. No, see. I mean, yeah. you just brought so much wisdom and insight yeah. for us to really think about. You mentioned earlier about accountability. And so yeah. that makes me think about, OK, the accountability and the question of are we really equipped? We're fighting for this big vision, but when right. we receive it, do we know how yeah. to maintain it, maintain it. And right for for the long run and so yeah. i love how you tied it back to your faith and mm -hmm. as a chinese muslim in the nation of islam we have these guides called self improvement guides mm. and it's you know off the the belief that self improvement is the basis for community right so, you know the, the accountability is definitely there for you know, yeah, our, our, our growth, you know, yeah. proactive and looking for these connections for, mm -hmm. you know, building community of diverse ethnicities and background and faith. So yeah. it's our self-improvement that's going to really bring in this new world that I think you're, you're, you're saying. So Absolutely. Thank, you, thank you for that. Yeah. Um, you are also a pastor that at a community church. So you know, with all that you're sharing, you're doing community organizing, then you're you're in this faith practice and you're preserving the faith of the people. It's a lot of work. It is. It's balanced and I'm in two <laughs> worlds. So yeah. I have to ask, how <laughs> are you taking care of yourself? What ways? Because I know for myself as a woman and I'm also, you know, I can relate to balancing two worlds, like right. faith world. Mm -hmm. organizing world the community you know right. it's it's so much i teach as well mm -hmm. any tips advice <laughs> listen i mean we, we, this, <laughs> yeah i mean this may be a conversation i'm also in school as well yeah. uh so i'm in a doctor of ministry program that just started uh yeah in february um and i'll actually be headed to a summer intensive next week um and i yeah, I think, oh, there's multiple things, but maybe not multiple. I think, firstly, I think, you know, when we say that it is a calling, um, I think that's really where that draws that distinction of, you know, whatever we're called to, I think the divine sustains us in that, right? Um, so, of course, we're human, right? Our bodies do get physically tired, but as far as, like, the mentality and the drive, the getting up every morning to do it, right? Is it somehow always replenished? Like even when I'd be like, God, I want to do something, <laughs> something else than this, <laughs> right? And yeah. it's like God just continues to ignite the fire. So I, I do affirm and believe that I have been called uh, to this work, um, and and also understanding that um, it's that doesn't mean it have to be one, one track, right? Like there's a versatility to it, um, and that there are other ways that I can care for myself, but also live into other pieces of me um, that that still is just as impactful. So that's why I love this Love Over Fear campaign because just the embracing of arts and culture, another thing that's kind of been gutted from schools, right? And, you know, and that's, that's the piece that brings us alive, right? Um, and so, yeah, I think for me, um, you know, the self, care is is yeah recognizing that calling knowing what makes me happy and 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 making and creating time for that uh so love music uh love uh our 
arts and culture. So I love live music, um, plays, uh, movies. So I try to, you know, sneak to the movies here and there. Um, and let's see, and exercise. Got to release the endorphins. Got to, you know, get a, you know, so I try to hit the lake, get a, get a lap in at the lake, a lap or two. Um, I'm trying to get back into working out. My trainer had kind of took a little mini sabbatical, but he's back online. So hopefully to, to get back on that track. Um, and then some of the spiritual practices, which I am still growing in as well as, you know, folks would always just probably think that I'm just always immersed in a Bible or in a devotional. Um, but you know, that, that is still, um, an act of choice. That's something that you have to choose to do. Um, uh, so definitely try to just yeah get my daily scriptures, prayer, um, sitting with community, sitting with those I love and who love me. Um, and then also another aspect of eBase um, that I love and that, you know, has been brought up with by Kate, uh, Sabir and our leadership there um, is a breath, breath work, uh, breathing. So, uh, we've been doing Tai Chi has an organization together um, and just learning even just how to move together, how to breathe together, um, which has definitely been transformative for um, our space and for each other um, because it, it just it makes you realize, again, as I've started out, um, that all of our actions uh, have a reaction. Right. And that as we're trying to move the the needle of community and of liberation it takes all of us but if i'm moving at my own pace when there is somebody that i'm trying to to help who is moving at a much slower pace if i can have the the the, the cognitive reality to slow down right um in order to to meet that person's needs then you know i've missed the moment of ministry um so even that is is still self-care for how we you know, like you said, the self-development is all weaving together, right? It's um, that we are all parts of a whole. Right. Um, and that, um, yeah. And, and yeah, and uh, and, and, and um, immersing into nature, right? Oh. Um, Got to take the socks off, get into the dirt, get your hand. <laughs> yeah, say it again. I'm going to hug a tree. And I'm hug, gonna... a tree. <laughs> hug a tree. Hug a tree. Yeah. Uh, my mother and and my partner are both uh, green thumbs, and I grew up so. And uh, just to piggyback, so yeah, I grew up my uh, in the, in the country. My grandfather had two acres of land, uh, so we would grow corn, butter beans, squash, tomatoes. So I was at eight, seven, eight years old out there tilling the land with my grandfather and both of my parents, and even I have a sister who still works in textile. Um, so when you're talking about the sewing machine. I've, I, my father would make me go and work <laughs> in the textile factory um, during the summers when I was in college. So he was like, I, I want you to understand the importance of education, right? And so he would make me, he would make me work uh, at the textile min, uh, mill. And uh, at that time they were doing 12 hour shifts. So I was working from six to six. Um, yeah, so, but that was the reality. Uh, for me, but it, it, you know, looking back on everything and just how God works, the divine works. And it's like all of those moments are just, and are, are have equipped me for, for the work that I'm doing now. So it's a beautiful thing. It is, it is, you know, last episode we had, uh, Eddie Zhang mm -hmm. from New Breath mm -hmm. and, and you spoke about breath yeah. and he really into the model of chi, you know, culture, your, uh, your history history, your identity, but tying it into breath and breathing together yeah. as one. So it just makes me think, you know, like the practice of Tai Chi, mm -hmm. we can come together through these different practices. So it doesn't necessarily mean we have to come together and organizing and doing the work. What if we come together to rest? What if yeah. we come together to create? What if we come together to learn from each other through different art forms? And right. that in itself is, is, is a beautiful work that we can also lift up as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And another self-care thing was sports, you know, but entertainment, you know, the, the need for the human spirit to be entertained has been something from right Greek, from Colosseum, right? From, 
men from gladiators fighting lions right <laughs> to <laughs> to now right but that that reality that there is a piece of us that transcends again race class gender that needs to be entertained right and so you go and look we got the nba finals coming up but if you look out into the audience of course demographics are given to where they are um but you know you go to a warriors game you see a plethora of culture and that and that has been their marketing strategy right to have you know asian american night to have african american night right they understand the uniqueness and the beauty the divinity of all of our cultures and that this is a hub that all those cultures come together even if you know um we we may not know each other or things of that sort so i think even that is something that that can be explored around just our entertainment um can be something that um or that is a space that could be also healing a healing and learning space um in a more intentional way i think they do it but of course capitalism but <laughs> but we can really find a way right to do that intentionally to yeah. where when folks leave they're not just leaving to go back into their silos right but they're leaving with a greater sense of community and that oh like this is my neighbor you know if the, you know like we're at least in the same city like you are my neighbor right and what are some things that are going on in the city that you know are impacting me what are what is impacting you and you know so that's a definitely one of those imagining kind of broader vision things but sports is definitely another one of my self-care self-care things yes yes warriors yeah. fan anyway Indeed. um <laughs> so let's create our own hub right yeah. let's create a hub um, so for those we're coming to our last moments of our podcast for those that have a question for Reverend Jeremy, please type in the comment section. Um, I do ask a question to every one of my guests, and I think you kind of talked a little bit about the unveiling. Mm. If we did a public presentation, if we were to take off the veil of love, this mm. is the face of love, what must it have right now? What does it look like? Mm. This was the face of love. What would it need to have? Need what the, yes. What would it need to have? Oh wow. Um. Hmm. The first thing that came to mind was a smile. I would hope love is smiling at at us. Um. Yeah. Um. Uh, I would say a smile. Kindness. Kindness, yeah. Uh, welcoming, um, inviting, um, uh, and compassionate. Compassion, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it starts there, right? The kindness, yeah. the invitation, right. the treating others how you want to be treated at Golden this, the understanding of others' story and struggles. So. We are reclaiming our own story at this point and we're sharing it. Oh, okay, we have a question. All right, what does love and understanding mean to you within your work, in your words? Great question. Hmm. What does love and understanding mean to me within my work? Um, Yeah, that's that's uh that's a great question. Uh, my mind just merely immediately tracked to, you know, there are multiple uh variations of love, right? Even in um within Greek uh philosophy, right? You have um um we got like eros, eros love, which is like erotic love, the fire that you have between um someone that you're in love with, uh Philio, um, which is where Philadelphia gets its name from, Philio which is brother and sisterly love. Um, Storhe, can't remember what Storhe was, but the love that fortifies and is not, um, um, what is the word? Uh, ah, hey, what I miss words, but agape love, mm -hmm. right? Agape love is the love that we say that the, the, that the divine loves us with, right? That God loves us 
that God looks beyond our faults, that God looks beyond our human frailties, our limitations, um, and that God sees our heart, right? And that's what agape, agape love, A-G-A-P-E, agape love. And I think that's that's what love means uh, for me when it comes to my work is that I am looking beyond the limitations, but also understanding what's impacting this person to love or not love in the way that they do, mm-hmm. right? And, and so when you think about, again, as we started about all the oppressive from, you know, economic justice, right? Ec- job, you know, not having livable wages, um, lack of transportation access, lack of access to health care, lack of access to child care, all of these things that impact working people, working families, um, and love, it takes love to look past those things to see the person, mm. right? Because you can easily, again, like then that's the world, that's the country we live in, right? When my ancestors, my people, our people have been, you know, judged by the color of their skin, right? And not the content of their character. Um, it We have to flip that. We have to reverse that. And that's the act of the, or the act of choosing to see people for who they can be and not for who they are. Um, and that's, yeah, you can't do that without love. <laughs> um, you can't do that without love. So yeah, agape love um, is, is that, that is my understanding that, and that is what influences how I show up and why I show up um, because it, it takes all of us and it takes, yeah, it takes a certain level of love, of compassion, of smiling, even when you don't feel like smiling and um, uh, being willing to enter in, into someone's passion, uh, even when you uh, don't have the capacity to do that. Um, but also boundaries are important. So <laughs> love is also boundaries. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not just saying go immerse ourselves into everyone's plight. Self-love. Um, self-love first, right. Um, and then allowing that to, yeah, yeah, I was, I still was kind of ruminating over that because it, it is a delicate line, right? The, the, of what happens for self versus like what happens in community mm-hmm. and, you know, um, yeah, like, you know, how, how the timing of that and how long that takes for folks to develop self-love, right? Mm-hmm. And, and knowing that, you know, somebody who was looking for love from that person and that person just hadn't developed enough right and we see that you know i think the pandemic revealed unveiled a lot of that right that folks are able are sometimes hiding behind certain types of love um because they either they didn't get that when they were growing up or someone manipulated that and took that from them um so i feel like i'm rambling a little bit but no uh yeah but that's real right that's it (laughs) yeah it's it's so it's a hard thing when we think about like yeah we are parts of a whole but how do we take care of the part yes i mean i think both Mm -hmm. both Both. yeah 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 like working intensely like Mm self-improvement self-care and then also that love will bring out the divinity um right in in each and every one that you beautifully have shared in this conversation, mm-hmm. the divinity and mm-hmm. experience. Yeah. And also reminded me, just listening to you speak about just recognizing the divinity in others. Like, you know, my grandparents, I remember the fear that they had, you know, every time they opened an envelope because of the language barrier and asking yeah, me to be it, you know, asking my parents to do everything okay, you know, and, um, just not being understood because they don't speak English here. Yeah. Um, so thank you for the work that you're doing that encompasses someone like my grandfather, my grandparents, someone like my neighbor. I grew up in Richmond and wow. I understand the, the, the power of just coming together and just yeah. cultivate the rich culture of Oakland. So Absolutely. thank you for all that you do. I look forward to based in Los Angeles, but I am, yeah. you know, working with Interfaith and yeah. definitely being contributing to the Oakland campaign. I look forward to creating this hub yeah. with you. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm going to hold you to it. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> Indeed. Thank you for, yeah, again, your hospitality, for 
setting the space and the energy. Um, yeah, I've definitely loved um, sharing in this space. And thank you for all those who join and who will listen later on. Um, but yeah, let's 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 all hop in this fight uh, toward love, toward justice, toward peace. So much war going on in the land, and um, you know, um, as always, I admonish my faith community here at Imani. You know, we are the ones that we have been waiting for. Um, if not us, who? If not now, when? So, yeah, yeah. I'll leave that with you. I'm gonna echo that with same thing. The like Grace Lee Boggs said the same thing. Grace Lee Boggs, that we, you are the one that we are looking yeah. for. Yeah. Peace and Thanks. blessings, everyone. Have a Indeed. safe, blessed day. Thank you, Jeremy. And I look forward to seeing everyone in the next episode. Yeah. Salam alaikum. Hey, Jeremy. Peace. Shalom. Bye. Till next time. Bye bye.